You're listening to another episode of the Anavivo podcast. Thank you for your time. And we'll start here. Welcome back to anavivo.com. We are joined today by my grandmother, <laughs> Joyce Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again, we're here for part two. We thought we had covered it in the two-hour session before, but we are here and excited for part number two, which is going to continue off a little bit of what we talked about, but also something totally new, which I'm excited about. <laughs> and I think you're excited about, if you remember what <laughs> we were talking about. I'm excited about it, but I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am... I'm, Waiting to be excited about it. <laughs> uh, so we had covered last time, Graham, basically your life uh, from childhood all the way up until now. Uh, we had covered sort of just the changes, a little bit of the changes in the last century of what what has gone on in the, in the world, of what you've seen and how life has changed for you and the family and your, your husband and your kids and my mom. And then we had talked, we had ended that session with a little bit of your testimony and where you had um, come to the, to the saving faith in Monterey and um, how that had then transferred to the kids and raising them in the church, which is not something you had done necessarily as a, as a child. And then um, <clears throat> that faithful impact on me, your grandchild, and my kids, your great-grandchildren, in that testimony of faith, which is really cool. So, uh, and then we went to bed, and the the (laughs) next day you said, oh, there's so much more I want to talk about. And so I remembered there was things, too, that I wanted. So go ahead. Uh, Excuse me. (laughs) Um, You want me to... We can just sort of take off from wherever direction. I know there was something you had wanted to share and we can we can start there yeah. and, and then just go from there. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> <coughs> um, I I had an experience mm. with God um, in Monterey, and I had not told, I have not told any of my kids oh. until. Today, I told Beverly to find out if it was all right to share it. Cool. There's nothing wrong with it. It, It's a very, very good thing. But it's the kind of thing that people might say, oh, yeah, really? (laughs) Uh, Suspicious. (laughs) (laughs) We had... um, A a young couple that lived just kind of next door, and uh, her name was Bonnie, and I I think uh, his—I can't remember his name, but—and it doesn't matter, but um, my husband was going to the school. He was a student at the postgraduate school, and Bonnie's husband was a teacher Hmm. at the postgraduate school. Cool. He did never. He he never taught uh, Dick. I can't remember what he taught, but that doesn't matter. Hmm. And uh, Bonnie had a, a prayer group at her house, and uh, she she was a really sweet, nice girl, and. They wanted to have a baby. Hmm. They'd been married three or three or four years, I don't know. And they had not had a baby. And she had been told that she might not be able to carry a baby. Hmm. I think because she had um, something like hip dysplasia. Oh, wow. But it would only be one hip. Now, Aunt Carol had hip dysplasia. Mm-hmm. But it was both hips. Wow. And... <clears throat> And uh, Bonnie could could walk all right and everything, but she had a little limp, and uh, she, so they anyway they were concerned that 
they were not going to be able to have a baby. So they said they were going to look into uh, um, adopting Mm. a baby. (laughs) And Bonnie had this prayer group. There were just five of us, three other ladies, and Bonnie and myself. And, uh, And Bonnie said, I'd like for us to pray tonight about whether we should adopt or Mm. not. She said, we kind of go in stages. We both say, yes, we will. Mm. And then somebody, one of us will say, well, I I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, we were praying, and uh, the other ladies prayed, and then it was my turn. And I started to pray. I started... uh, I started to pray, and I sort of, I sort of, all of a sudden, it was black around me, just just black. I wasn't. I, I didn't know what it was. I mean, it wasn't such a thing that it frightened me. Mm-hmm. It was, I just didn't understand it. And black, would, like blind, like you couldn't see blackness, or no, just, it was black, like, like a darkness. Yeah, you know. it was dark. <clears throat> just <clears throat> so I, uh, I said, um, Lord, we really want to know if uh, uh, they. We want to know if Bonnie and and her husband should adopt a baby, mm. or is there any chance they might have a baby. Mm-hmm. And and all of a sudden, I was not saying anything. I, I. It, it was almost like I was, like I passed out. Maybe not mm-hmm. really. I didn't. I didn't fall down. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I, I, I look. I. I heard a man's voice mm. say. Tell them to wait. And I thought, I wonder if her husband came home. Mm -hmm. And I kind of opened my eyes. It was still very dark. But I looked at Bonnie, and she said, he said we should wait? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, yeah but I don't know who said it or something like that. You had told her that or she also heard no, the voice? No, she evidently heard. Mm. I don't, you know, that's what's amazing to me. Mm-hmm. I, I, God must have spoken through me mm. and just used me because there was no other man there. And the other ladies left and... and <clears throat> Did the other ladies... Also hear that, or was it kind of? They didn't say. They just her. said, "They, you know, it's time to go or something." Yeah. So, and Bonnie asked if I would wait until her husband came mm. home, and I did because he was home soon, and, and she told him, and he said, <laughs> "He said, well, I guess that's our answer. God spoke through you," <laughs> and I'm going. Why why would God speak through me? Mm. I mean, why didn't he speak through someone? <laughs> I I was shocked and I and I was a little afraid. Mm. I I didn't understand. Yeah. And actually I had not told any of my kids, Bev or Mark or any of them. And I'm not sure why, mm. but I I didn't forget it. Every once in a while it would come back in my mind, you know. Mm. But on Sunday, Pastor spoke uh, uh, in um, Genesis uh, 16, I think. And something he said in there, and I've been reading, I've been reading in the Bible, I've read it through it twice. And I can't really remember what he said, but what whatever he said brought back brought this back to my mind, and mm-hmm. I said to myself, 
I've got to tell the kids. Mm. So anyway, that's where all this came <laughs> from, Tim. And uh, I don't know what you can do about it or do for it or anything. Did but you ever tell Dick when he came back from school that night? I, oh, who? Dick? No. Your husband? I yeah. never, I, and I don't know why. Hmm. So nobody, I, not the kids or, or Dick or anyone? Well, the kids were all too... <clears throat> or they were too young too at the young. time, yeah. Well, but. actually, Mark was 10 or 11. So hmm. I could have told them, but it was the kind of thing that I, I, I started to say I was afraid to tell anyone. Afraid in that I could... I think it would really have hurt my feelings if someone said, oh, yeah, right, mm. or or put it down some way because, because it couldn't be put down. It yeah. was there, and they said, they like, well, when your mom, when I told your mom, she said, well, if Bonnie said, if Bonnie heard it, too. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It happened. It yeah. did. Yeah. So anyway. And did Bonnie and her husband end up having... A month later, she got pregnant. Oh, cool. And she had a sweet little boy. <laughs> and I've been thinking about him lately <laughs> and thinking, I wonder if they had any others. Yeah, yeah. No. Versus, but I mean, I, they could have I, very well have given up and just adopted and the sweet little boy never... Yeah, and that born. would have been, if that was God's will, that would have been fine sure. too. yeah. But it was just kind of nice to know that God cared enough about them mm -hmm. to give them a baby yeah. of their own. And to tell them, to reassure them yeah, in that way. Yeah. So Cool. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, that's, I mean, it's a, a totally an abnormal experience, right? So, yes. it's, of course, it's going to be terrifying to share with anyone, especially in conservative circles. Right. Um, conservative Christianity. And so, yeah, well, I'm glad you're sharing now. Well, and at, <laughs> well at that time, we, we had friends that uh, before we moved into uh, um, the, the school, we um, had friends that uh, went to a church that spoke in tongues. Mm. And I think that had a little bit. Of a, of a, of a hold back on my feeling. Sure. I didn't want them to think I was uh, part part of that. The yeah. more liberal movement yeah. of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just I knew it was real because because Bonnie and and Jerry said it was real. Yeah. So I. That's I, his name, Jerry. You remember. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> I, yeah, when I, you're not thinking about it, it's hard. Yeah, <laughs> it comes back. I think that's right. Jerry and Bonnie. So, anyway. Cool. Wow. And so, and especially, I mean, this is a time in Monterey where, from our last episode together, you had shared that's when Dick became a believer, yes, right? Yes. And and you as well, really. Well, in that sense. Yeah. Well. We became a family. And it became a family. And all yeah. of that, you know. So there's a lot of change happening already. <laughs> it's not not yeah. something you want to say, oh, by the way, yeah. God speaks to me now, well, <laughs> audibly. And I, and I was really, <laughs> probably part of it was I wasn't sure how Dick would take it mm -hmm. because he was a brand new, brand new Christian. In the same vein, I wonder how he would have taken it if you had shared that as well because yeah. how how yeah. faithful are we, you know, when we are honest ambassadors or authentic yeah. before God, not fearful humans, <laughs> which we all are yeah. well, <laughs> susceptible to. <laughs> yeah. And I think I am maybe a little more so because my family was not really uh, Christian. Yeah. I, I think they were, but they were not active Christians. You think they as in your parents or yeah. they... Well, and your your Indian dad who said, I'll never step foot in a church or yeah. it'll burn down if I'm in there. Yeah. And your mom who sent you to Sunday school right. but didn't attend. Didn't go. Yeah. Did your uh, in-laws, did Olive and um, what was what uh, was your dad's? Uh, Ralph. Ralph, did they go to church? They, Were they, they went to church, yes. Uh, okay. I, but I'm not at all sure yeah. that 
either one of them knew, knew Christ. Mm -hmm. I think it was the thing to do. Sure. To be seen in church. Yeah. If you were seen in church, that was good. Mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, and, and there were other problems in, in their family that they didn't want people to know. Yeah. So they wanted to put put up a, a front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> well, cool. How do you feel? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, after after uh, I got out of church last yes yesterday, and I thought, wow, okay. I guess I should tell my kids. <laughs> I think it's time to tell the kids. <laughs> so, and and there was nothing wrong with telling them. It's just mm. that again, I, I didn't know how it would be taken. Yeah. And one thing I didn't want to do is disturb their faith in God, because mm. <laughs> they, they they're all good Christians. Praise God. Yeah. So is it a, a feeling of relief, or yeah? Now it now, now. yes yeah. <laughs> now that we're live on the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, now after I told Beverly this morning, I yeah. thought, okay, okay, she didn't say she didn't she, excommunicate you from. She didn't say that's kind of foolish, Mom. Because <laughs> if she had, I wouldn't be telling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she said it was entirely possible. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it all is with the Lord. I yeah. think it's we get in this um, theological box uh, organization pattern as as humans. Our our baseline nature is to want to organize and you know work in, in all the things that the Lord created us to do anyway. But part of that process, especially tainted by sin, is to try to make everything fit in something we understand. And mm -hmm. so theologically we put God in this box of he either can't do and doesn't do miracles, miraculous things anymore. And we call that the cessation uh, belief or movement. And we just say, God doesn't act that way anymore. He did in the past. He did in some of the new Testament, old Testament, but he doesn't do that anymore. Or we fall into the other box. We put God in the other box of continuationism where we, we say he, he acts like that, and, and not only that, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not a believer. You you need to show the same signs mm -hmm. that he does. And so, uh, but there's, that's not necessarily the right way. This, it doesn't have to be binary, <laughs> for one. And who says God can't speak to you and not speak to someone else and 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 do it now versus right. in the Old Testament or the New Testament, or, you know, so, and do miraculous things in this country, but not in another country, and you know, especially in, in America, we we're so pompous and exactly. and arrogant. Well, if God's speaking yeah. to the Africans, surely He would speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> Does He not know that I come from a rich New England family? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, all right. Well, so that's that's true. But you know, does He you, know what church I attend <laughs> on Sunday mornings? I sit in the third row. <laughs> <laughs> we used to sit in the second. <laughs> oh, oh! Surely God would speak to you <laughs> in the second row. <laughs> Listen to Pastor LaHaye, you know, and, it, and sometimes it seemed like he was talking just to us, just to you. <laughs> but yeah, God doesn't uh, God doesn't care about any of that. Uh, no, and aren't we glad? <laughs> yes, honestly. Yes. <laughs> how 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 would we keep up a pure Christian attitude and living? And everything, how could you not slip and mm. and say darn? Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Right. You know? But we both know that God is a miracle worker. Mm -hmm. We, with all He did with with your parents, mm -hmm. and 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 with you, mm -hmm. because you were able to, you know, kind of get things tied together and get them home and all that. I, I, God had to do that. Mm. I mean, you're smart, Tim. But, <laughs> but, you just know, in case there was any doubt, thank yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just in case. But the thing is, you know, how, and, and Jessica going yeah. down, how, how did, 
how, how come that happened? How come she was here? Yeah. We just talked about that the other day. Oh, our, okay. Uh, yeah. Our other episode. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, when you look back at that, that whole two months, mm-hmm. August and September, was packed full of blessings, mm-hmm. even with the sorrow that was caused. Right. You know? And hundreds, hundreds of people yeah. around the, oh, yeah. the nation and the world that were um, praying and yeah. supporting financially and impacted by and blessed by their peace mm-hmm. and rest and testimony. It just, it's, it, God is amazing. I, there's, <laughs> there's no other, no other word for it. It right. just, it's, if, if you truly need something, and he agrees with you. You've got it. Yeah, that's a verse. Oh, really? <laughs> I thought, okay. <laughs> well, one of them, Matthew 6.33, I mean, we confuse that with making God a genie and just saying, oh, if I'm pursuing him, he'll give it to me. But the, the key to that verse specifically is being in his will yeah, and yes. asking in his name. <laughs> Like you just said, if he agrees with you, it's yeah. not, it's not, God, I want this. And I, I mean, I can ask, I can yeah. make a laundry list of things all day, but <laughs> right. if I'm not actively engaged in a relationship with him or living in his will already, then I'm not going to get those things. And when I am, then the things I'm asking for are not going to be things of my own heart. They're going to be <laughs> things of God's heart anyway. Right. Yeah. So, well, and, and if you ask for something, in his will, and it's not right. Right. He, he won't get it, but you will not necessarily feel neglected mm-hmm. because of that. Yeah. He'll give you a reason. All of a sudden you'll say, okay, you know, I really probably didn't need that. Right, yeah. right, yeah. So, uh, right, and he'll just, sort of uh, correct our heart into or or soften that desire. yeah. Mold yeah. it into the one he wants for us. Yeah, I think we. I think the big thing is to remember to ask <clears throat> to, for something in his will. Mm-hmm. I think. I well, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, I mean, if I want a million dollars, I'll say, "Give me a million dollars if you will." Yes. Yeah. And he yeah. hasn't yet. <laughs> <laughs> And it's important to to remember and to share that it's not the, the things we're receiving or not receiving are not predicated on whether or not we are um, doing something yeah. good yeah. or bad. It's not um, like the prosperity gospel folks would teach you uh, that the reason you haven't gotten this is because you've got some sort of sin in your life. And if you would just work harder and purify yourself and repent more and whatever. Yeah. Or on the Catholic side and, and come before another man to um, repent. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's none of that. It's, yeah, just totally being in his will. And It's and the only way to live. Ask in accordance to his heart, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's um, a part of you that has come and passed on to your kids and then passed on to me, mm-hmm. your grandkids, and then passed on to my kids now, your, your great-grandkids. And and Lord willing, with uh, my own dedication and my wife's dedication to that, they'll pass it on to their kids and mm-hmm. to their kids and to their kids. And uh, part of your legacy that will be literally eternal. And you'll get to... Uh, not just know, you don't just know that that's happening, you'll actually get to witness that <laughs> someday <laughs> right? in yeah. eternity, in, in eternity, which is going to be really cool. Oh, yeah, my great-great-great-great-great-great-grandmother <laughs> in the faith was Joyce Boyd. Really? That's her right over there. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you think I'll look the same? <laughs> oh, we're going to be gorgeous, beautiful, yeah, un- I hope so. unblemished. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no pain. <laughs> oh. That'll be good. Yeah. So thank you for sharing. 
That was good. Okay. You got it now. (laughs) (laughs) It's all recorded in this little box here. So, uh, and for those of you listening, uh, the reference to the parents and everything is, can be found on, uh, this podcast as well. Episodes, uh, in a three part series, part one with my parents doing the intro part two on the exfil and part three, um, with my parents wrapping it up. So if you're interested in what happened to them, you can find that on the podcast as well. So uh, the last couple things I wanted to talk about since we uh, had spoken last was more on what you see for the for your life from the Lord um, these last, oh, 30 or so years of singleness, but also um, how you could use, how you can encourage, I've got a lot of folks that listen to this and a lot of uh, personal friends that are not married or that have been married and have lost uh, their spouse in some way or another. Um, and you've been faithful in that now longer in your singleness uh, than you were married. Mm-hmm. Praise God. <laughs> Still here. Yeah. And so what are some things, some some words of wisdom some words of encouragement that you could give to folks also in in the same path as they are struggling uh, in loneliness and um, and just trying to figure it out and how you how you so faithfully serve the Lord continually. Well, <clears throat> I have to tell you, Tim, I have a list. Uh, well, I haven't made a list, but I've got to of uh, widows hmm. that I've been praying for for. Oh, years. Mm. Uh, since I moved up here, uh, it just seemed like everyone, all of a sudden, someone became a widow. Mm. And I thought, this is what they need. They need, they need strength. They need uh, 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 honor. They, they need to be able to go to someone for support. Mm-hmm. And so I, I pray for these ladies, and now I have some men I pray for, too, <laughs> that have lost their partners. Uh, most of them are Christians, and I ask God to, first of all, heal their hearts, mm-hmm. and then give them what they need to be secure. And, <laughs> and then I have some that I know. I have a Catholic lady. I have two Catholic ladies and another uh, uh, not Catholic, but uh, I don't know whether she knows God or not. Mm-hmm. And and I, I talk to them occasionally and, and throw in something about, about God. And uh, I pray that God will send uh, his spirit to them and or and somehow bring them to the uh, to the the place where they understand they need God mm-hmm. in order to be completely taken care of. But I ask God to help the widows with their problems, whether they're they're emotional or financial. I mean, a widow can have a lot of problems. Yeah. Like financial, um, I'm lucky. I <laughs> lucky, if you will. <laughs> I I at least have Dick's um, <clears throat> from the Navy, so I have everything I need. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have everything you need, and you and you think, if I end up homeless, mm. I'll be out on the street, and I'll be pushing a buggy with my belongings in it. Mm. And that's a, a terrible thing to face. And I don't want them to have to face that. So I, I just say, you know, God, keep them steady. Mm-hmm. And if they don't know you, send someone to And I have two, uh, yeah, two men that I pray for. One is Catholic. And when I told him about your mom and dad, he said, well, if you think an old Catholic can, 
can pray for them, <laughs> then I'll be praying for them. Mm. And I, I don't know what that meant. I don't know whether he meant that he he went to God himself or whether he went through a, a priest or something. I sure. don't know. And it doesn't matter. I can't do anything about it. Sure. But yeah. God can. Yeah. So I just said, God, maybe that's an opening. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. He's coming. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, but I have probably, well, I, I don't even want to guess. I bet I have at least 25 <laughs> ladies that I pray for. Yeah. And, and two men. <laughs> and so if they ask you, or maybe they have before, how you do it, um, you know, you've never been remarried and uh, you've never been, um, you've never been, um, you've been taken yeah. care of, like you said, by, right. by Dick's uh, Navy pension, yeah. which was a well, huge blessing. But, you know, these ladies may ask you or, or folks may, may want to know, um, getting through the loneliness, getting through the, after the heartbreak, after the yeah. loss, yeah. Uh, or, or after the realization that it'll never be, you know, for folks that just never yeah. get married, then what? <laughs> it seems well, like a long way away from yeah. death, you know, to look down the road and say, I'm doing this all by myself. Well, actually... <laughs> actually, I tell them I couldn't do it without God's help. Mm-hmm. That's my first statement. Mm-hmm. And if they go further, I'm glad to tell them, explain to them. But I, I just said, I just say, there's no other way that we can be sure of of anything, of our finances or of our homes or anything. Mm. But... I find my satisfaction in God, yeah, and He answers my needs. Mm. So, and it's about all I can say <laughs> sometimes because I really don't want to tell them that they're they're Catholic people are not right, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, I I have to leave it up to God mm. and try and have him tell me if someone needs more of an introduction to God mm-hmm. then I, he'll he'll tell me yeah and I'll say that's and I have said to oh, actually many of them God is the only way mm-hmm. he's the only solution to what you have now unless you intend to remarry yeah and even then, should still be your only solution. Uh, yes, yeah. But you know, some, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. some people feel, well, I, I, I have to get remarried because right, right. I need a man. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And a man would be nice to have sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. So, um, and you can you can decline to answer on the podcast here, but have you ever felt um, just totally alone or in a in a in a spot of despair? Um, or depression that has caused you to think I would be better off not here anymore. No, I have I have never felt that way. Mm. I have <clears throat> I have been. <laughs> this is a professional podcast, as you can tell with the the so, grandfather so clock. <laughs> um, I um, I have never felt alone or dejected or. I have been nervous sometimes if I've had a big bill coming in and I've thought, oh, you know, I, do, do I have enough for that? Mm. Because, well, our land taxes, things like that, that sure. are really high. But um, then your dad has helped me with that, with the, with the budget. Yeah. And, and so I'm okay now. Uh, and that wasn't really... A, <clears throat> it wasn't really a time when I was ready to give up on God. Yeah. It was just uh, very I, stressful. <laughs> I allowed it to be stressful. Yeah. So. Yeah. <coughs> Good. So, um, so for those that are listening as well, one of the things I like to ask and sort of get narrowed down and find reassurance uh, even just for my life is the, the question of where you find your motivation 
to get through the day. And part of that could be, you know, this conversation about depression or about um, uh, God sustaining you or, or practical things like doing a budget or, or whatever to help you get through stressful times. But really, you know, when you, especially I'm looking at your life, Graham, and over, again, over the past 30 plus years, you've been doing this by yourself, you and the Lord, and uh, and not without lots of help from other people, but um, but you're not you're not a slob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. <laughs> you're you're in a beautifully uh, 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 blue and green flannel today. In our last <laughs> episode, you were in a red flannel <laughs> to support the our Scottish roots. But um, you're not um, you're not a slob. I mean, you're not down in the dumps. You're not. You've got motivation to get out and go shopping and make quilts for people and come to church and be part of the community and and do things with your life, um, make things here, make a home that's beautiful, and you've just got this internal uh, or intrinsic motivation that keeps you going. Where would you say, what would you say that is, and, and where do you pull that from? Well, first of all, <laughs> my father was very, um, I, I'm not sure how to say it, he he faced a problem, and he stomped on it, and <laughs> and you know fixed it. Yeah. And so probably there's some of that in there. But uh, I did. Well, my my middle sister, <clears throat> Carol, had cancer. In uh, she well she'd have it in several parts of her body. Mm. Uh, she they kill it in one part, and it would move to another. And so she was being very depressed. Mm. And I, I called her every day to talk to her, and I'd say, Carol, you can't be depressed. You have to look to God mm. and and let him handle it. And she she would say, it's so hard. And I said, I know it is, but it's the only thing you've got. Yeah. And, uh, and I found myself... I was ready to move out of here, mm. and I, I'm not sure that you even knew, <laughs> but uh, I had your mom go with me into the um, assisted living in uh, Oak Harbor, right? <clears throat> and uh, and and we bought an apartment, and uh, <laughs> uh, we had we had already started to move things in. Mm. And we were we came home for another load. We would pack both cars. Yeah. And uh, and my youngest son called, and he uh, Tom is very forceful, <laughs> <laughs> and and he's very he's he's very kind, but he's very forceful. And he was talking to Beverly, and Beverly was trying to explain that. It was my choice, not hers. Mm. And uh, so finally she said, yeah, yeah, you can talk to her. And I took the phone, and Tom said, Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> and I said, Tom, I can't take care of this house. I can't. It's, it's just getting to be too much. And he, mm-hmm. said, he said, wait, do you really, really? want to move out of that house? And it hit me, Mm. kind of like a a hand on your forehead. (laughs) And I said, no. (laughs) No, I don't want to move, but I can't take care of it. And he said, you've got enough money. You can spend that money. You don't have to save it for us. We don't want your money. (laughs) And I said, Okay. Okay, we'll think. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see, Tom. Hmm. And he hung up. And Bev called the place, and said that she thought we <clears throat> thought we were having buyer's remorse. Hmm. And and I'd like to come in and talk to the pres not the president, the person who ran the sure. the place. Yeah. And so we did. We went in. And she listened to uh, what what Bev told her and what I told her. And uh, the girl that that 
did all the sold sold me the place mm-hmm. uh, had had tears in her eyes, and I felt really bad because I thought she was upset with me mm. or upset with losing a sale or something you know? sure and and the the I call her the president the whoever um said. Do we still have the check that she wrote? And the girl said yes, and uh, and the president said, "Well, don't we have a couple of people on our, on our waiting list?" And she said yes, and she said, "Give her back her check." Hmm. And and I had written two checks because I was going to take my cat, and my cat was another eight thousand dollars, <sighs> which. To have a pet in the place. <laughs> yeah. <Eight>. So <laughs> anyway, anyway, the, and I realized that that was depression. Mm. That that was that was total depression because I looked out my windows. Mm. It was just before summer. Yeah. And there were weeds, high weeds. Yeah. All yeah. in front and all in back. Yeah. And I thought. I can't mow this. That was depression. Mm. So I had to say, thank you, God, for getting me out of this, because now I think about it and think... Thank you, Tommy, for being forceful. Well, I have. <laughs> I said that to him, too. <laughs> but I don't think he would have been had God not been behind him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. But uh, but that's it's good to have personalities of all types. Yeah, that's probably the only time. It's the only time I can remember of having real depression. Mm. I mean, I when Dick would go to sea, sometimes I'd get a little bummed. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah, that's but, natural. Uh, but I think that was my only depression. Yeah, so. yeah depression or even fear. Of like, how am I going to do all this? <laughs> yeah, well, that that I would have when Dick was gone. You mm-hmm. know, I think, okay, you got four kids. When I had Mark, I thought, okay, okay, I can, if if I have a fire, I can carry Mark out. I'm okay. Yeah. And then I had Beverly, and I thought that's okay. Mark can walk, and I can carry Bev, and we can still get out. Okay. And then I got Brad, <laughs> and I'm thinking. <laughs> Okay. Which one do okay. I love more? <laughs> Which one do I grab first? You know, and, and Tom. And then I realized I didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. I really, if we had a fire, if we had a fire, God would take care of it. And we <laughs> we almost did one, one, I think it was Thanksgiving. Your mom and dad. Tell me you weren't deep frying a turkey. No, your mom and dad had gone someplace, and I had Ben and Seth and oh, Stephen. With, with your grandkids now. Yeah, so you're yeah. watching my brothers. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know where you were. Oh, you probably were in the Navy. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But I was going to put something in the oven, probably the turkey. And so I lit the oven, and all of a sudden, there's smoke coming out of the oh, oven. Yeah. And I thought, Oh my gosh. And I had something in there and I can't remember what it was, mm. but it lit on fire. And I I said, Okay, guys, get out of the house. Open some windows and get out of the house. Yeah. And two of them were upstairs and Seth was down here and he said, Well, what's the what's the matter? And I said, Well, there's a fire in the oven. And he came out and he said, Where are your potholders? So I found them and I said, Don't don't Burn yourself. Don't you be careful. You don't know what you're doing. I'm accepting no liability to your mother for this. (laughs) He said, and he said, just open the glass door, Graham. So I opened the glass door, and he carried the pan outside. Nice. Well, you know, I could have gotten depressed (laughs) had I burned the house down, but the thing is, that's the way God has watched over me. If something like that happens, I I say, God, what do I do next? <laughs> you know. So yeah, uh, and I'm not sure what your question was, but I thought of that. 
No, that's good. Seth's had a lot of experience with fires, and so he knows what to do. Yeah, which well, is, he did. He kidding. did that. You know, I, I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, awesome. Yeah. Actually, four of them were here. Ben and Seth. Ben was here. No, Ben wasn't here. No, he was in the army, probably. Ben was off to the. I don't know. Off to the war. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was. I mean. Basically, just sort of the encouragement to other single, uh, either widows or folks that have never been married, and, and finding your motivation, what gets you out of bed every day, and what just oh, well. keeps you w- dressed and not a slob, and, and <laughs> wanting to participate in life, and wanting to participate in what the Lord still has for you, even if you think you're done, or yeah. how can the Lord still use you, yeah. or other negative thoughts that the devil may use to to try to impede you from I do find that the mission. devil does things to me. Yeah. I mean, sometimes when I, uh, uh, well, when I get up to in the <clears> middle <throat> of the night and mm-hmm. then I go back to bed, sometimes I lay there and I think of things way from the past, things mm-hmm. that don't even matter yeah. anymore, keeping me awake. And I'm finally, I've gotten, so I say, Lord, if that's the devil, just get him out of here. And sometimes it is. And yeah. if it isn't, then I try to figure out what God's trying to tell me. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, I, I don't, I don't know. What was your question? Just motivation. <laughs> motivation. Yeah. yeah. What What gets I, you up? And well, actually, my bird and and my cat were my motivation mm. because snow would get up at five o'clock and lay on my feet. Yeah. And if I moved my feet she'd bite my toes. So that was my motivation. It's a good practical motivation. Pet, yeah. Pets in general. <laughs> somebody pet. else to yeah. something else to care for. Yeah. yeah. But uh now I really don't have that motivation because uh and, and sometimes I find I sleep till th- till seven o'clock mm. which I usually I used to get up around five with with snow, yeah, and the bird wanting to be fed, yeah. So, uh, but I also try and think of what I have to do mm. if there's uh, go to the commissary or go to pay this bill or pay that bill or something. But uh, I really don't need a whole lot of motivation to get up. I just yeah. stop sleeping, I get up. <laughs> <laughs> like your dad. You just yeah. see a problem and stomp on it. Yeah. It's time to start the day. Yeah. Well, that's actually that was my dad too. <laughs> get up. Carry two jobs. Yeah. Provide for us. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's um I think one of the things I found in my life or from studying other people is the way we display Christianity the most, if that's the right way to say that, the way that we show Christianity, our our belief and faith in God the most is by serving or living uh, for other people. And so in this case, it sounds like that was, you know, like the pets are a good example of that. You're serving, <laughs> <laughs> living for the pets. They, they have, they force you out of bed. They give you things, yeah. but, it, you know, and, and um, in, a, in a practical sense, living for our kids or our spouse. And when you lose that, that can be very disheartening and very, especially if you've been married uh, or with someone for so long. And that was your motivation for serving that person and for um, displaying the love of Christ to our kids or to our, our spouse. And then when you lose that, what does that look like? And so now finding that in others, in your grandchildren or your children or uh, the community members at church or things like that, I think is a huge um, part of what it means to be relational and part of what it means to be in fellowship with people. Mm-hmm. It's a good motivation. Well, <clears throat> I, uh, oh, <laughs> I just thought of something else. Uh, when, when we were in San Diego... And uh, Dick would go up to Sonora to fight fires in the summertime. And <clears throat> I, had, I was, well, they called us uh, deaconess, deaconesses. 
and and our big job was to have flowers on the on the podium and all that mm. stuff, and to visit the sick people. Mm. And I visited a woman. Uh, at the time, I think she was probably early seventies. Okay. And uh, her husband was in the hospital, and he was in a coma. And she said that he would, every once in a while, he'd come out of the coma and and know who she was, or sometimes he'd come out and not have any idea who she was. Mm. And and that uh, that went on for five years, or eight. I think it was eight. Yeah, yeah. Because it was about four when I started seeing her, and about eight years, and I I was teaching at the Christian school, and I went down after school, and just to check out with the secretary, and <clears throat> when I went out down, she said, "Oh Joyce, we just heard that so and so's husband died, mm. and that was the husband of the woman that I visited," and I said. Praise the Lord, because I could not imagine my husband being out of it for for eight years. Yeah. I mean, I know obviously he's not going to be thinking about the things he liked to do. Yeah. yeah. But I just didn't want that. Yeah. So I drove home that day, and I prayed. I prayed to God that that when it was Dick's time that he would go peacefully Mm. and completely unless he could be healed completely. Yeah, yeah. And two years later, Dick was killed, and he was out of of pain. He wasn't Mm -hmm. in pain, and he wasn't thinking, if I could walk, I could go hunting, I could go fishing. Yeah. I can't walk. I'm in a wheelchair. So I got what I asked for. <laughs> and that was a little hard to think about. But then I thought, okay, what if he had come out of the plane crash and he lost a leg yeah, or an arm or something? Mm. And then, so I just had to say, thank you, Lord. It, and in fact, I remember saying, Thank you, Lord. I really didn't want it so soon, but thank you anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was... Thankful in the faithfulness, even yeah, in that. Yeah, <laughs> well, I asked for it. Yeah. And I got what he answered God your prayers. chose to give me. Yeah. Even if it was a different timeline than you had Exactly, asked. yeah. <laughs> I, I need to be clearer when I give him my... Timelines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you've learned from this yes, is... that's <laughs> what I've learned from that. Be more careful. Uh, be, be clear in my... In 15 time. years. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he, he passed doing something. It wasn't just passed by a car accident or a quick form of cancer or yeah, well, that's... drowning. It was doing something he loved. Oh, I mean, he from loved. your story on our last episode... There was nothing he wanted more than to fly. Anytime oh, he saw an airplane yep. go by, that's what he wanted to be doing is, yep. is flying. And was able to join that Navy program where yeah. he was picked up only two years into college to go learn how to fly and then finish his two years of college. So that's so he was, yeah, doing something that he loved and, and it was quick. So right. answer yeah. to prayer. Yeah. It was it was a big answer to prayer, mm-hmm. honestly. Well there was a, well, when Bev Bev was in Papua New Guinea when this happened. Did I say that the last time? You mentioned that briefly, or I mentioned it briefly, that that's how she came back. Yeah. um, Well, I prayed before she came back that someone would sit beside her on the plane Mm -hmm. to uh, talk to her and comfort her and that kind of thing. And when she got off the plane, I I said, Bev, how was the ride? And she said, oh, it it was it was good it was good and i said did someone sit beside you and she said no and you know i think god was there mm. I, I think jesus was there mm. and i thought okay he was a good choice thank you lord <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking someone 
more somebody somebody different, but well, yeah, well, you, <laughs> you, will, know, you will do. Yeah, you'll do. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, yeah. it, you don't know what you're asking for sometimes. We don't. Yeah, like but children. But if you ask in God's will, right, it's going to be the right thing. Right. Yeah. To bring this conversation full circle from what we just started talking about at the beginning of this is asking in God's will and and from a place of really totally trusting him Mm -hmm. that his will will be done, but also total faithfulness that no matter what happens, that we're at peace, that it's going to be okay and that he's in control. If it's his will. Yeah. It doesn't matter because, you know, it's like my, my children ask me for things all the time out of, and I know when they're asking out of selfishness and I know when they're asking (laughs) out of, um, out of purity, uh, out of a pure heart. And, and it's funny because when they ask for things out of a pure heart, they don't know what they're asking for either, necessarily. They yeah. think they do. Yeah. And I say, oh, that's that's not really what you want. What you what you want is whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's usually food related. And um and they just don't know because they don't know the greatness or the vastness that I have as their own father in store for them. Yeah. As a human, as a sinful father. And so we can't I can't even imagine the the vastness and what God has in store for us, and so we ask what we <laughs> what we think we want, right? <laughs> but it's so limited. Uh, but if it's in a good heart and faithful, and we can trust in Him, uh, and there's nothing wrong in asking God for what you want, right? If you just say, "This is this is my desire. This is what I really, really want." Right. If it's your will, God, give it to me. Mm-hmm. And that makes all the difference yeah, in the world. Yeah. So. Yeah, he wants to know. I mean, he knows already. He knows, yes. But he wants us to voice that and come to him with those Yes. Those things for sure. So. Yeah. So um, this has been great so far. Um, do you have a favorite joke that you would like to share with us now? The part of the episode where my grandmother shares a joke. Oh, okay. Now, wait a minute. Your grandmother? You. Oh, me. <laughs> you you are my grandmother. Do you have I, a joke that you would like to share? Yeah, but what is it? I don't know. I'm asking you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite joke that you like to tell people when they come over? Or when you meet no, someone? No, my father did. Was that the one? What, what, does he have a joke that you'd like to share? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Well, yeah, <laughs> because I don't know what... <laughs> the only joke I can think of is that my father would all. You told us the one about the butter. Okay, that's that's the that's one, the one yeah. where he would, and that wasn't that was more of him just being goofy or yeah. whatever. Oh. So I don't have a joke. You don't have any jokes that no. you've learned in all these years. Not that I can tell. <laughs> 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 this is the safe space, Graham. You can share it on this episode. <laughs> Honestly, I can't. I can't think of a joke. I'll have to come back on the air again. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll do this. We'll save this again. So, I guess I'll wrap this episode up by um, asking you to share with us what you would consider uh, what your secret is for a long life in terms of uh, your diet. Because oh, um, she didn't want that. <laughs> it's it's world world renowned. It's it's well known that you have one of the um, n- not most strict diets <laughs> you're ever. Right, you're right, not most strict. <laughs> and you are the last remaining grandparent on our side, and so oh, that's right. <laughs> to remind oh, to remind you again. Oh dear. <laughs> and and you're active. You yeah. are caring for your lawn and doing your, your stuff and animals, and you, <laughs> it's you chocolate. St- still drive. That's what it is. In and out of town and drive to church and drive yep. shopping. Yep. What do you eat? Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> you do. She does have a bag in her freezer of York patties, York sponsored patties. by York patties today, <laughs> that never seem to, to, run, to, out. to run out. They never run out. <laughs> <laughs> if they run out... Check me out and see if I'm breathing. (laughs) (laughs) How many York patties do you consume a day? Oh, well, honestly, maybe at the most four or five, really. (laughs) Four or five York patties a day. 
Yeah, unless it's in an hour. If I get <laughs> if I get hungry. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, that look at that, folks. And ice cream. That's I, that's also I, still the same food group. It's still I know, sugar. I know. Well, <laughs> ice cream and York patties, folks. You heard it here. <laughs> I like hamburgers. I like spaghetti. Oh, I and love I'll spaghetti. I make spaghetti once in a while, but it's with like you, big meatballs or like a meat sauce no, or just the just noodles. Little, Crumbs of meat. Okay, okay. <laughs> I just, when you cook for one person, it, the, the job of cooking takes the fun out of the eating. And so <laughs> I sort of, if I make spaghetti, I make enough for a couple of days. Yeah. I like I like eggs. I like, um, like scrambled sc- eggs. Scrambled, okay. With, with maybe some ham or something like that in mm. I really don't have a diet. <laughs> oh, I, oh I know. <laughs> <laughs> I do try to eat a salad. I've started eating <clears throat> salads wow. two times a week. Wow. But Well, I buy them at Safeway. What was the... <laughs> little round one. I mean, where... Well, well see, I, I like lettuce and, and tomatoes and all that stuff. But if I buy it and I only eat it two times a week, mm-hmm. it spoils before I'm... Oh, so yeah. I spend more money yeah, yeah. on the big parts, so I buy the little salads. So, <laughs> what, what was the impetus behind that change <laughs> to go green? <laughs> well, they told me I needed to for my blood. <laughs> I've forgotten why my blood was, what was wrong with my blood, something. <laughs> and she said, you need to eat more greens. Okay. I said, I don't like greens. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm old enough now to not eat greens. <laughs> I'll eat what I want. Yeah. Well, that's true. But I I have tried to be a little sensible when <laughs> when they tell me my blood's weak. I eat another grain, <laughs> another salad. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, so do you just eat it right yeah. before your doctor's appointment? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, two days. <laughs> no, no. But I I like things like well, like the turkey. Mm. Like the whole turkey dinner was wonderful. From Thanksgiving, yeah. But I can only eat little bits. I used to eat a whole plateful. Yeah. Now I eat munchies. <laughs> <laughs> so, Got to save room for the ice cream and the York patties. No, the pie. Or <laughs> oh, the pie, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, you know, I really, I know I don't eat right, but... Well, who's to say? So f- who's to say what's right? That's, Clearly, that's right. So far, I haven't. I'm still you don't eat alive. right according to who? Yeah. According to somebody else that's dead yeah. that wrote it <laughs> in a book true. a long time ago. Well, that's true. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> I think we should be writing a book about the way you eat these <laughs> things. So, I eat what I want, and you have hungry man meals. No, I used to get those, but they're not that good, really. Good. For you or good tasting? <laughs> I don't think they're good for me. Oh, that's but, true. <laughs> I mean, I, I eat microwavable them. TV dinners. Yeah. yeah. So uh, no, I used to eat those, but I don't anymore. They because they're not. <laughs> they don't taste like real food. Ah, that's it. So yeah. if it tasted good, you would eat it. But if it tasted like real food, right, right. But because would. it's just a condensed yeah. version of a dehydrated no, meal. I, I, oh, I do eat pizzas, the little bitty, <laughs> of the course you eat little pizza. bitty pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> personal, personal pan pizzas from yeah. Mod Pizza or something. Well, no, they you get them in the commissary. For, oh. <laughs> they're frozen. <laughs> nice, <laughs> but they're good. Are you listening, Ben? <laughs> this is a shout out to you who eats pizza and drinks Coke and Red Bulls. You're doing no, great. No, don't drink. <laughs> don't change. Don't drink the Red Bull. That's, oh, don't. Ch- oh. That's not good for you. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind. What are you drinking right here? That's a, uh, that's Pepsi. Pepsi. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I used to drink Dr Pepper. Yes. All the time. So I much did. so that I got a mountain bike from Dr Pepper. <laughs> yeah. I forget why. You had won some. Maybe you had saved up a coupon, or there were like oh. on the boxes were a bunch of coupons, and I got this next. Next bike, oh, but it was sense. branded Dr. Pepper uh, mountain bike <laughs> <laughs> because of how much Dr. Pepper you drank. But you've 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 moved to betrayed Pepsi. them. You, you <laughs> went to Pepsi. You know, I, and I'm not sure why. 
You left the doctor. Yeah, I left. I like Dr. Pepper too. Yeah, a real doctor. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, good. You heard it here first. So, <laughs> I think that's. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to um, end this episode on? I think no. it's been great having you and sort of getting a part of your life. And I'll go ahead and try and write down. Write down some things for the next one. <laughs> anything. <laughs> That comes to light. So, so you moved, uh, Dick, my grandpa Boyd. You moved his plaque and ashes up here, or just the plaque when you came up from my husband. Mm-hmm. He's buried at sea. He's his the remains that yes. they had from the car, the plane crash. Yeah, buried at sea. And so the plaque that's over here in Sunnyside Cemetery. That's just the plaque. Then there's that's nothing the, there. The Navy gives you a, right. a plaque. There's nothing under it. No, nope. <laughs> right, <laughs> but you will be there. That's where you're. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Would you like to be buried at sea? No, I know. I'd you... rather not be buried. Period. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of thought maybe God could come. That's okay. that's fair. Jesus, ask. I <laughs> ask you ask and you will <laughs> yeah. receive. <laughs> yeah. No, I. Uh, I actually. I I want to be cremated. Okay. Well, I don't want to be, but that's better than being buried. Um, and I had wanted to be scattered under the elm tree down here. Oh, yeah. But your mother said she didn't think so. So <laughs> so I paid for funeral services, and I <laughs> and they can do whatever they want. Sure. If they want to change them, but then they have to pay for them. <clears throat> yeah. So, so uh, but you know, I won't care once I'm gone. Right? Yeah, you'll be you'll gone. be glorified and having a great time. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be waiting to have a good time. Waiting probably. to have a great time. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so the plaque there with my grandpa's name that'll stay, and we won't add yeah. we won't add a plaque for you. Yeah. We'll add one here under the elm tree. Well, the, no, I think there's a room on there for me. Yeah, I there is a little in the spot. Bottom or something. Okay, yeah. cool. But I have a plaque that's here that I used to have under the tree. My for grandpa or for trapper? Uh, grandpa. Okay, because <laughs> um, you have a stone for trapper. My, yeah, my <laughs> the dog. In case anyone's wondering. Yeah, my um, father-in-law was a mason, and when Dick was killed, they sent me. Mm. a burial plaque to put in the cemetery. Ralph. Ralph was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing was, I lived in San Diego, and I had a tree out in the front yard, and they wanted me to put it under that tree. Mm. And I said, I didn't think that was a good idea to advertise Mm. that maybe there isn't anyone there but a woman. Yeah, that's wise. <laughs> so I didn't put it there. So when I came up here, I put it under the tree. But then one of my, <laughs> I think one of my uh, gardeners hit it with something and, and broke. I had it mounted on a piece of stone, mm. and it broke part of the stone off. So I just put it up up here on the porch. It's a it's a memorial plaque with his name. His name and when he was killed or birth and death. Now he was a mason as well. No, he, yes, he was because his father wanted him to be, mm-hmm. and so he joined the masons in Walton, and never was there to go, or he, nor he immediately went flying and yeah off to college yeah. and the yeah. rest yeah moved to San Diego and so and he was not interested in it, but it was what his dad wanted. So he so. was not active after his membership. Yeah. He wasn't active. To begin with, <laughs> I mean, he just had no <clears throat> desire, yeah. no, no, no will to do it. Right, yeah, right. So. Yeah, that's an interesting topic. I mean, we could delve into into that, but I guess him not being an active member of the Masons, your yeah. husband, you wouldn't have witnessed anything that you could share on the air, per se. But not really. Yeah. Well, now she, now <clears throat> Grandma, what was she? Grandma, who? Uh, his wife, uh, Dick's Dick's mother, Olive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what was she? 
She was a matron. Yeah, the, they've got a name for the women folk. Yeah, I um, think it was. I think the Masons, that's what it was. Like, and she was a matron for three years. Daughter of the stars or something. I don't yeah. know. And she Jamie, was, where's Jamie? Jamie's not with us today. Never mind. Who's Jamie? Jamie's the person that looks up things for me when I'm in the middle of a podcast. Hey, hey, Jamie. That's Jane. That's, um, can you look up what the name of the Mason women are? Don't don't mind Jamie upstairs. Continue. <laughs> She's not Jamie. <laughs> so <laughs> so Olive She's was Jessica. Olive was a, a a matron. Yes. Okay. And and she was very serious about it. But huh? I, I bet there's a story there. Were they were they uh, Mason and matron before they got married? No. Hmm. I uh, an I, arranged marriage even? No, I I don't even. I I don't think uh, they were not really very happy together. Oh, oh! Order of the Eastern Eastern Star. That's it. That's it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, Jamie. (laughs) And I have several several of her pieces that she was given for being such a good. Really, and she gave them to you. Oh yeah. Who else would she give them to? Well, she could have given them to Bruce's wife, but that wasn't a happy idea. <laughs> Are they artifacts of something? I don't think so. Like Noah's Ark? No, no. Or the They're, Statue of Liberty? I thought I... Are they in this house? Do yeah. they glow at night? No. One's in the bathroom. It, Great. It has, Is it full a, of lead? It's a hand. Oh, no. It's a. You got a minute? <laughs> we can pause this. So we just found it. The um, the hands, hands from the eastern easterly star, eastern star. Yeah, it's a it's a porcelain uh, piece that holds a, a set of hands that holds uh, rings. You would take your ring off and put them on the fingers yeah. for washing or something. So. Not very, uh, not what I was expecting. Unless there's like a clue inside when if you break it open, there's some sort of masonic. I don't think there is. <laughs> clue. Well, they didn't think that in National Treasure either. And look at that. They found all sorts of clues from the Masons. Anyway, so Ralph and his wife, Olive, your yeah, parents-in-laws, yeah. in-laws. were uh, Mason and Matron. Yeah. And then, of course, then Dick, your husband, Richard was um, a Mason in Walton, or at least signed up to be one. Well, yeah, in <clears throat> registered to be one in in registration only. in registration only. Because I asked him in uh, in um, San Diego when we first moved there. I said, "Are you interested? Do you want to find it?" He said, "Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why would I want to?" I said, I don't know. I don't know. Why not? And I didn't know. He must have known something from his father. Well. Or or witnessed something as a child that. The things I read about him is they're they're a nothing group. Mm -hmm. I I honestly don't know what they do. Yeah. Except get together and. Do you think maybe he, as a child, witnessed his mom and dad just away a lot doing things that were. Oh no! Not necessarily, not not evil or anything like that, but yeah. just just being gone, just absent yeah. as parents. I don't think in so. meetings and things like that. Not really volunteering. I don't think you did that. In, yeah, and, and actually, no, I I don't think they were the type. She she liked to have other friends but they did nothing they did very little together they were not well Ralph had an older brother Hmm. Uh, uh, I can't think of his name it doesn't matter but at that time and Ralph's family was very, very rich. 
And when, when the father died, at that time, everything goes to the first son. Mm. Everything. As it, as it should. Uh, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> but it's biblical. Whatever you think. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but I had the feeling that that uh, Olive married Ralph because he was from a rich family. Mm. And when the father died and everything went to Lavelle, the oldest son, uh, I, I think I think the marriage fell apart, mm. honestly, because Ralph started drinking mm. and and he he was a total alcoholic he he would hold a job for a little while and then lose it hmm. probably because of alcohol i don't know but um so his mother became very angry and very spiteful hmm. and and she was bigger than him so sometimes she took it out on him Hmm. And I, <laughs> I, I couldn't understand. I could not understand it. Hmm. I didn't. It. It was like um, it, seeing a, a couple of foreign people mm-hmm. that I didn't really know that uh, the way they treated themselves. Yeah. And uh, at. at and Dick's dad used to call him in San Diego. And, and er, whenever he called, it was, well, I, I'm, I'm getting out of this. I'm killing myself. Mm. I'm not going to, I'm not, I just called to say goodbye. Wow. And that was very hard on Dick because he was too far away to do anything. Yeah, yeah. But he did call his cousin and tell him to go over and, and take the guns mm. out of the house. And, and he said, you know, I don't know what, what you can do about the knives. Mm-hmm. They have to stay there, but at least get the guns out of the house. Wow. So it, it, that was very hard on Dick. Uh, but it, it was the way he grew up. Yeah. With, mm. with anger. He yeah. grew up with anger. Which is a, so, yeah. It's a it's not a fun way to live. No, yeah, and and back to the Mason thing. I mean, usually it's they're not alcoholics, so it's yeah. not something they allow or yeah tolerate. Yeah. Usually, from those yeah. that I know. So, um, and now the Mallory side. What is their heritage? All of Mallory. I honestly don't know. Uh, As the genealogist yeah, here at the table. I, I don't know. What have we found? Yeah, we could go back. Oh, there was a, look. there's a, yeah. In Scotland, there's a castle. Well, that's the Boyd. That's, well, that's, that's um, them. That's Ralph's side. Yeah. Boyd, but what, I thought that's all what of, you were asking. All of Mallory. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, I have I have no idea. She used to tell me that I thought she was saying that her her brother was seven feet tall. Mm. And when I was looking at their pictures the other day, I realized it's her father mm. that was seven feet tall because I knew her brother. I met him. Yeah, and I thought I I don't remember him being that tall. Yeah, you know so. So wow. that's where you you all come from, I'm sure. <laughs> you just keep growing well, you taller. Say, you say you all, you mean everybody in my family but me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I no. am the oldest, but I'm the smallest. <laughs> well, shortest, not God, smallest. God has a sense of humor. Yeah. Um, so well, he, he gave you so many brains. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me so many brains. I have yeah. multiple brains. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, now to... to pivot the conversation to our Jewish ancestry 
that's the Laney Fisher is on the reefal yes. side. Is that right? Yes, I think so. Yes, I'm pretty sure. So I, I know it's not. <clears throat> it's not on the Mallory or Boyd side. I know it's not on that yeah. side, and I'm pretty sure. So your mom, Reefel. Yeah. Well, Galloway. Galloway, right? Who married the Reefel? So it's on the. Is that on the Galloway side, or is it on your dad's side? That's the what I was trying to remember. I think it was on your dad's side. Well, my Riefel. dad was German. Right, but she was Lainey Fisher was born in Germany. Yeah. This probably. was eighteen um eighteen eighty oh. something post civil war. I have no idea. <laughs> post civil war post United States Civil War, but uh pre uh World War One, so pre yeah. Holocaust and, and yeah. World War Two and all of that uh against the Jews in, in Germany and a lot of the Jews that lived yeah. there. And so she, this Lainey Fisher was German citizen, but Jewish blood. Right. And um, and that's all we know. That's all we know. <laughs> and that's a lot. <laughs> and she's your great-grandmother is who she is. Oh, really? On that side? Pro- yeah. So she's my yeah. great-great-grandmother. Wow. I'm going to I don't have to go back and check the files. <laughs> we'll do <laughs> we'll do a deep dive on family history, not that, that any of that is relevant for my listeners, but um I do often use that in conversation is that we are descendant have some a little bit of Jewish blood in us when people ask uh because it's just a fun piece of trivia. Yeah. Family trivia. It is. <clears throat> so, all right. Well, if have you thought of a joke? No. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this episode up then with with no jokes. With no jokes, I can't what believe a shame. it. What a shame! <laughs> Guess we'll have to do another one. We'll do a we'll do a maybe we'll do a video podcast. Oh gosh! In the kitchen with Joyce Boyd, not cooking, <laughs> <laughs> not cooking. The diet of an independent <laughs> grandmother who is still r- running around well, and uh, living off know, Pepsi and. You know what? Yorks, <laughs> peppermint patties. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> <And> hamburgers. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not unhealthy. No, I know. I mean, I'm still alive, which is amazing. Yeah. You know, I, I shouldn't be, but praise God, I am. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't know. Well, this has been a good uh, conversation with you today again. And a great look into your personal history, but also the opportunity for you to share uh, on the record for your family members some things from your past, which was uh, really neat. Uh, However, re- my family members are no longer. Oh. I am the last. No, no, your children. Oh, <laughs> they are your family members. I, I oh, am. I'm a family really? member. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the I'm you're, the last reefle. <laughs> you're you're the last reefle. Those family members, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, the yeah. rest of us are still here. How many it's children? How many that, grandchildren? How many great grandchildren? Yeah, and A so lot. <laughs> we're still here. So for us to be able to witness and bear witness to that story uh, of God working in your life, and also the. The faithfulness, I think just an exercise in faithfulness in the mundane is what I take away from this, which I've said before, but honestly, that's sort of, you you read stories about heroes of the faith all the time, and that is almost easier to understand because it's moments of greatness and moments of action and moments of doing something great for God and, and faithfulness, but really it's these stories of the mundane everyday life faithfulness for the past 30 plus years you've been single and alone and having to trust God with everything and to be to bear witness to that is an encouragement to me but also an encouragement to the rest of your family and to everybody else who's gets gets the uh, honor of hearing you on this episode so and bearing witness to your life so thank you you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. All right, we'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no, not tomorrow. <laughs>
All right. Thank you all for listening again and uh, tune in to the next one. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Ana Vivo podcast. We welcome your feedback and ideas. You can learn more about us by simply Googling the word Ana Vivo. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. I am a licensed real estate broker with Compass Real Estate and a nationwide real estate matchmaker. We consult with you for free, find and vet the right real estate professional that specializes in the area and niche you need, are paid by that professional, and they get clients like yourself who want and need their unique specialty or winning track record. If you or someone you know is in the market to buy or sell real estate anywhere in the U.S., don't simply web search the highest paying advertiser. Let us use our licensed experience to find and vet the real and best professional for you. It costs you nothing but a phone call or email with me and it saved my clients financially and emotionally. I'd be honored to serve and you can reach me direct by email at tim.c.miller at outlook.com. And as always, to God be the glory.